Hi, I'm Aki from the men's national team and today we'll be talking about the drag flick. Um, for this week there will be four more video videos on flicks from last summer that I'll explain a bit and talk to you about and first of all we're going to focus on the technique. So there's three parts we're going to practice. There's the sling in the end of the drag flick, there's the run up and then the movement of the stick and the body. Um, for the run-up, you kind of go on a, I'd say, 20 to 30 degree angle to the ball. And then you try to run up to the ball with about two or three steps. You step on the height of the ball with your left leg or foot. And you cross either behind or frontal. And to, from there on, you have to try to have your steps straight on the line. So this line is good to practice. So you come from here, run up. Um, the main power from the drag flick is from slinging the ball out of the stick and to practice that there's an easy exercise um, you have the ball on the top of the D and you go down on one knee have the other knee facing the direction of the goal then you have the the ball around mid stick and then you just try to sling it out Go again, from here, yep. okay, um, to have the ball sling out as much as possible through the catapult, the idea is to step to the ball really close and be upright, and then during the drag, you go low, and just by dragging the ball straight, it rolls up your stick, and then in the end, you sling it out and you go up again. So the movement is close to the ball, high, low, high again. All in all, the three combined parts should look a bit like this. This corner was in India, um, the semi-finals of the World Series against South Africa. And um, yeah, let's look at it first and then talk through it again. This one we actually prepared for a lot because we had uh, we played South Africa in the group stages of the tournament too and we had our problems with the corners so um, I think their linesmen stopped one corner in the in the group stages so this time we decided to kind of surprise them by going from one castle to two castles in the last one also because we knew that their first runner looks up a bit late so we would have to adjust his line to the second castle which gave us the opportunity to go around him. And then, because the linesman was so good, we decided to go high, just to make it more difficult for him to save the ball. Kapler just shifts to the right. Kapler scores! Would you believe it? The hooter had gone, but hockey rules are very clear. The penalty corner has to be finished. As such, even after the hooter goes, the penalty corner will be this complete. This corner was uh, against Japan in the third place game of the World Series. Um, this was really close to the end of the game. I think there was two minutes left to play. And this was our chance to tie the game. So let's look at it first and then I'll talk through it. Okay, to talk through the scouting uh, of this corner, we'd played Japan previously in the group stages too already and um, had seen that they were quite well prepared and um, kind of read our corner variations pretty well. Um, and we knew that their goalie trusts their first runner a lot and um, that 
from our previous corners we'd always we'd flicked a lot um, diagonal from the first castle or straight down from the first castle or straight down from the second castle we I don't think we flicked a single corner diagonal from the second castle in the, that tournament so the idea was to um, to go to the second castle as we did in the game before against South Africa kind of to lure the goalie over to the glove side and you can see him make a little step over to the glove side here and then open up the angle to go diagonal into that bottom stick side corner and also through my motion I tried to fake um, like I did uh, I've tried to fake the same corner as we did against South Africa so to pull it around and then in the last moment dragged it all the way through to the stick side This was in the group stages of the Pan Am Games, our game against Mexico, and I'll just let it run through again and then talk through it after. I'm not quite sure what the score was at that time. I think this corner was for the 3 1. Um, we knew the Mexicans ran a 3-1 quite often and um, that their first runner would jump sometimes a bit. Uh, so the idea was to get go through their runners and try to get into that glove side corner uh, where the, the view of the linesman's blocked through the two runners and their goalie is offset quite a lot to the stick side. Yep, so that's what we were aiming for and luckily it went right through them. Look at today's corner. Um, I'll just let the whole corner play and then talk through it after. Okay, if I remember right, this was at the Pan Am Games against Chile, uh, the third place match. And this was close to the end of the game. We were leading 2-1. And this was kind of our chance to finish the game off. I think there's a couple of minutes to play after that. And in the previous summers, we, we played Chile quite often. Um, and we'd flicked a lot of corners low against their goalie. So I felt good and I kind of wanted to surprise him. So that's why I decided to go high. Um, and also uh, on the video we scouted, we saw that the runner didn't have the best of lines. So we could get past him. Um, I'll pause it in the right moment. And so, yeah, as you can see here, uh, we had Mikey and me shift to the left a bit, just one step to open up our angle and to make it more possible to get past the runners inside. So here, we go inside past the runner to get into that top corner and you can even see it how offset the goalie is, so this corner is quite open. 